brake line, so obviously we're dealing with the fact that that thing needs to be able to seal. If we're going to lose pressure on there, we're going to have a problem. So with any brake line that we have out there, we're going to have two banjo bolts crushing in between that, that rubber brake line, or well, that, I'm going to start over one, two, three. We're, with any banjo bolt out there, we're going to have the banjo bolt, a crush washer, the line, another banjo bolt, and then it either goes up, gets the caliper or the master cylinder. So I want to prove a point here with the camera since we can zoom in and take a look here at used uh, banjo washers. So let's, let's do that. This bolt, it's hollow. So when people try to take this bolt and just go by its diameter and compare it to a torque chart, what are they going to end up doing? You're going to end up over torquing it, especially if you go to aftermarket brake lines, especially sport bike guys. What are these bolts that come in the kit? What are they made of? Aluminum. Aluminum, and then you can't even use the torque spec that's in the manual. You need to use what's supplied with the brake line kit. So I'd say that the majority of the time these are over torqued. I'm going to uh, make a point of this guy right here. This, and this is real common on sport bikes where you want to go to two brake lines right from the master cylinder. So we're going to have three washers on this guy because we're going to have the banjo bolt. Sorry about that. Okay. We're going to have the brake line. We're going to have a washer in between, another brake line, and then the one that goes up against the master cylinder. So you need to be looking for three on that one. Okay. See how this one actually has a, a pretty strong lip on it? Yep. Oh, wow. Is that fantastic? Mm -hmm. So listen, if you go and reuse that, is what are the chances of that sealing? The, think of the work that's required. You put this on the bike, you bolt it on, you get a service manual, you torque it to spec, you fill it with brake fluid, you get the brake bleeder tools out, you've got everything going and you're bleeding that thing and it keeps just puking a little bit of brake fluid out of there. It might even be hard to see and you can't build pressure. So now that you can't build pressure, you're going, whoa, maybe something's wrong with the master cylinder or something's wrong with the caliper and you have to start spraying soapy water around. Well, if you can't build enough pressure because it leaks right away, is it gonna bubble? No, because you're not building pressure. Do you get what I'm saying? And it just ends up getting, being a big hassle. You would have to dry everything off thorough, put all your brake fluid in, maybe use the baby powder trick, pump it up, and then look to see where it gets wet, and you go, oh, man, just out of a simple washer. You know, we bought 10 of these yesterday, and I think it was a buck or a buck 50 or something like that. They're really cheap, really cheap insurance. Uh, don't uh, take a chance on those. That makes sense? And there's your nice close-up on that. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching, and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.